My name is Dr. Katherine Friedman Flack. I'm going to talk to you today about our research study entitled Major Gastrointestinal Bleeding, often is caused by occult malignancy in patients receiving warfarin or dabigatran to prevent stroke and systemic embolism from atrial fibrillation. I'm currently an internal medicine resident at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania, but we largely did this project while I was at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. There are several reasons we chose to do this study. First, the prevalence of atrial fibrillation and anticoagulation is increasing in the aging global population, and there's increasing prescribing of direct oral anticoagulants. However, while most studies have suggested that major GI bleeding is more common with the direct oral anticoagulants compared to warfarin, there's a paucity of evidence guiding diagnosis and management in these cases. Second, it has been hypothesized that initiating an anticoagulant may act as a stress test revealing an occult cancer. Moreover, dabigatran results in active intraluminal anticoagulant within the GI tract, which thus may represent a more intensive stress test than warfarin. However, prior to the study, research on this topic has been limited. In order to complete our study, the following methods were used. Two experienced gastroenterologists blinded to drug treatment group reviewed the primary source documents related to the major GI bleeding events in the randomized evaluation of long-term anticoagulation therapy trial, or the RELY trial. Data regarding clinical presentation, diagnosis, and treatment of major GI bleeding events were extracted from the primary source documents. Statistical comparisons were then made between the study treatment groups and also between GI cancer-related major GI bleeds and a comparator group, comprised of major GI bleeds from a non-malignant or unidentified source. There were several highlights of the study. First, approximately 1 in 12 major GI bleeds in patients receiving anticoagulation therapy reflects a previously undiagnosed luminal GI cancer. Second, overall colorectal cancer accounted for approximately 80% of malignancies diagnosed after major GI bleeds. There were more colorectal cancer associated major GI bleeding events in the dabigatran group than in the warfarin group, but more gastric cancer associated major GI bleeding events in the warfarin group than in the dabigatran group. Third, in all dabigatran users, major GI bleeds due to GI cancer present sooner after initiation of anticoagulation than major GI bleeds in the comparator group. Fourth, major GI bleeds resulting from cancer presented as chronic bleeding in approximately two-thirds of cases. Thus, major GI bleeds in the cancer cohort was more likely to be chronic than major GI bleeds in the comparator cohort. Fifth, there were no significant differences between dabigatran and warfarin-treated patients in the short-term outcomes of cancer-related major GI bleeds, but morbidity and resource utilization was high, with 75% of all cancer-related major GI bleeds requiring at least one blood transfusion and a mean hospital stay of 10.1 days. Our results suggest several explanations and recommendations. First, cancer-related major GI bleeding in patients with atrial fibrillation receiving anticoagulation is common. So as other studies have suggested, major GI bleeding in these patients requires investigation and is not dismissible as an incidental manifestation of anticoagulation. Second, because cancer-related major GI bleeding is common in these patients and results in significant morbidity and resource consumption, proactive screening strategies may be worthwhile. Prospective studies should be completed to investigate if these strategies result in earlier cancer detection and thereby decrease morbidity and resource utilization. Third, dabigatran is converted to its active form by esterases as it passes through the GI tract, resulting in progressively higher active dabigatran concentrations in the distal GI tract. It thus may act as a topical anticoagulant, and we hypothesize that this may underlie why major GI bleeds appear sooner in dabigatran users with a malignant bleeding source than in those in whom cancer is not diagnosed. The topical dabigatran activity may also underlie the significant increase in major GI bleeds from colorectal cancer in the dabigatran group compared with those on warfarin.